And now it's time for part two of Thevenin's Theorem. So last time we said you can take any single port linear bilateral network and replace it with a voltage source that's in series with an appropriate impedance, the Thevenin voltage source, the Thevenin impedance, and the remainder of that circuit, in other words, everything beyond the, uh, the cut point, the, the port, if you, if you will, um, will behave identically. We'll get the same current and voltage in the remainder of the circuit. So let's take a, a look at this today. We'll start off with a little voltage source over here. A couple of resistors and so forth. Alrighty, now let's put some values in here. We'll say this is minus J100 for the capacitor, 200 for this resistor, 300 for this one. We'll have a J400 for the inductor, and surprise, surprise, 500 ohms for that resistor. We'll say the voltage source over here is 100 volts at an angle of zero degrees. So what we want to do is find the voltage across this 500. All right? I'm going to call this point A, node A. We're going to call this node B. So really what we're asking is, you know, what is VB? Right? Now the traditional way of doing this, all right, a basic series parallel analysis, we could do some voltage dividers. Right? We could, for example, uh, find VA once we know VA, we could do a second divider to find VB. So we would ask a simple question. You know, what is this combination? Right? What do I have here? Well, I've got 300 in parallel with a series combination of 500 plus J400. Right? What does that work out to? Well, that works out to 210 plus J45, All right? So to get the VA, we could take our source, 100 at zero, multiply that by the thing that we're interested in, which is the 210 plus J45, divided by the entire impedance. So I'll just stick the reels together and we have 200 plus 210 and we have the J45 and a minus J100 in there. Right. So when we calculate that out we'll wind up with 51.9 at an angle of 19.7 degrees. Right. So that's VA. Now I'll do a second voltage divider to find VB. So here we'll take VA, multiply that by the voltage divider between the resistor and inductor. In other words, 500 divided by 500 plus J400. Right, so you plug in our VA value and we will wind up with a VB of 40.5 and an angle of minus 18.9 degrees. All right, so that is the voltage across the 500. Right, that's what we're looking for. Now, to do the Thevenin equivalent of this, right, we have to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So we have to find out what the E Thevenin value is and then find out what the Z Thevenin value is. So E Thevenin, all right, that's the open circuit output voltage. So looking over here, right, we're going to pull out the 500 ohm. So I'll just sort of replicate that over here. And we're 
to say, what is the voltage sitting out here? All right, so there's a 200 minus J100. Got my 100 volt source over here. What do I see out here? Well, this inductor might look a little problematic. You know, like, you know, what's the deal here? It's just hanging out in space. It actually turns out to be quite convenient. If this isn't open, then the current flowing through here must be zero. If the current flowing through here is zero, then the drop across the inductor must also be zero. So that would indicate that this voltage, the open circuit voltage that we're looking at, has to be the same as the voltage across the 300. Right? If this drop is zero, this has to be the same as this. So we can pretty much forget about that for a moment and just say, well, that's just a simple voltage divider. Right? That's all I have to do for that. So the E Thevenin will be my 100 volts times the divider that I see over here, which is going to be 300 divided by 300 plus 200 for the reels minus J100 on the cap. So our E7 works out to 58.8 at an angle of 11.3 degrees. Right, so that's what I have over here. Right, maintain that reference polarity that we have. All right. Now the question becomes, what's Z7? So now we would look essentially back into this circuit and we would replace this the source with its internal impedance which for the voltage source will just be a short and what we see now is this 300 in parallel with the 200 minus J100 combo and that thing that triple element is in series with the J400 so it's not like we're completely ignoring the J400 here right I mean it wasn't really impacting the E Thevenin, but it does definitely impact the Z Thevenin. So we find for Z Thev 300 in parallel with this combo 200 minus J 100 and then this is in series with the J 400. Right? I want to be really explicit about it. We'll put some extra parentheses in here. So when we grind this out, Z Thevenin will work out to 386.8 at an angle of 70.8 degrees. In uh, rectangular form, this is equal to 126.9 plus J 365.4. So I can now finish my drawing over here. I now know this is inductive. So I'll just put these pieces back in. There's my 126.9 for the real part, the resistive part, and a J365. 0.4 for the reactive part, the inductive part. So, if I go back and take this 500 ohm and stick it back over here, when I compute what I wind up with for V500, it had better work out to what I did originally. In other words, it had better work out to the VB that we calculated of 40.5 at negative 18.9. So how do we compute this value? Well, this is, now that we have the Thevenin equivalent, this is a fairly straightforward computation. It's just a series circuit, right? I can do a voltage divider on this really quick. So the voltage on the 500, or VB if you prefer, will be our source, 58.8 at an angle of 11.3, times the thing we're interested in, 500, over the combined impedance, right, 500 plus 
126.9 plus J 365.4. All right. So grind this out and you will come up with 40.5 at negative 18.9 degrees, which is precisely what we were expecting. Now, if you were just going to solve this circuit as is done, right, it's probably quicker to just do this, do what we initially did, rather than go through and find a Thevenin equivalent, recalculate everything, right? But here's the thing. We turn around and say, hey, um, that's all well and good, but I'm not going to use a 500 anymore. Instead, I'm going to use, uh, you know, a 750. Okay, well, I can redo this whole thing, right? Plug these values in. And remember, I'm going to have to recalculate this, right? Because that's 750 now. And that's going to impact my VA. It's, of course, it's also going to impact the VB. So I have to redo this. Over here, we just go, well, it's 750, and that really only impacts here. One computation, we're done. Okay? And then once we've done that, we can turn around and say, nah, I don't want 750 there. I want uh, 350. Okay, well, got to change 350, got to change VA, change VB, right? Here we just say, well, it's 350. Changes in one spot, we're done. And I can just keep doing this all day. So if this is a question mark, right, if this is a, a, a variable, if I don't necessarily know what this is, if it could be several different values, if I'm trying to see you know, what happens, see a function of, let's say, power uh, versus the value of this resistance, having the Thevenin equivalent is extremely useful. It's a very quick, efficient approach. So we use Thevenin's theorem for things like this. We also use it for... Um, finding other kinds of equivalent circuits. For example, we could use this to find the input impedance into an amplifier. Um, we wouldn't necessarily need the voltage part, but we would use this same technique to find um, the impedance part of it. So it's uh, a nice tool to have in your, in your kit bag. Very useful. Simplifies some of these uh, more complicated kind of what-if questions. And there you have it.